we are promising you a very mouth-watering episode. It really can't get better than this. Uh, Simran and I have the good fortune and after much trying have finally got Ritu Dalmi on an evening where she has some time off and guess what? We are holding her to it using every moment that Not we fair. have with... Yes, Not exactly. Fair. There she is. I was so easy. <laughs> Come on. You've been, been so some... busy. Yeah. I mean, you're expanding. You've been busy. You're never out of news. I'm you're coming up with your supposed to... books. No. It's endless. I should be in the kitchen cooking, not sitting and talking <laughs> to you guys here. So I'm just being honest to my profession. That is All right. So if you want you a mouth-watering meal. argue with that one. We exactly. also want a mouth-watering show now. Exactly. Okay. Now, I'd like to start by asking you, you describe yourself, you know, as a lazy chef in the intro to Italian Khana. You, that's what you say. Yeah, but I that's was just being something modest. doesn't sound right about that. I was just trying Tell to us, be modest. <laughs> to get to to get to where you are today, and you began in the early 90s, and it's been quite a journey. What is the average amount of hours a day that you are still spending over two decades down the line? Okay, so I've been doing this for 22 years. Mm -hmm. When I started, I was putting in 15 to 16 hours a day, seven days a week. Now I'm older, a little bit, you know, bones ache, mm -hmm. legs get tired. So I put about 14 hours a day, seven days a week. And so tell, tell me, oh, how much of this is just about the food? Because now I would imagine that there's a lot of other stuff that goes into it. Give Absolutely. Us a, give us a taste of uh, that. I would like to spend most of my time in the kitchen, but being a chef is just not stirring the pot. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, most of my time actually goes in sourcing ingredients is what makes diva i mean what we stand for has always been the best possible ingredient which in a country like india it's got better but it's still something very very tough so 50 percent of my time goes just sourcing ingredients changing menus trying out new menus new seasonal produce coming in training which is another huge part because i'm very proud to say uh, we have, I think, about 170 or 180 people in all in the Diva group. More than 80, 90 percent, I would say, have never been to a catering school or a wow. catering college. Okay. So I never went so to you, a catering exactly. school. Exactly. So, so you never held that against anyone. No, no. Really. I'll, yes. I'll tell you, if they have been to a catering school, then I have a problem. That's already okay. minus five on the resume. Okay. Because when they come, they have fresh minds. Right. You know. So it's a very wrong way to approach it, but it's also my own ego. Sure. You know. I don't want someone to tell me that stick a thermometer in the chicken to see if it's cooked yeah. or not. And I don't want him to show off how he chops in this fancy manner. Mm. So most of the people who are in Diva mm. have been taken in raw. I see. They've been trained the way I see food. Mm. Uh, and actually it works beautifully well for me. So training is another huge mm. part process. And now because unfortunately we have a few restaurants, mm. I also have to do some that of is the being modest. horrible, no, but in some ways it's really sad because I got into the restaurant business because I loved cooking so much mm -hmm. and I didn't want to do things like finances, administration, etc. And it's now I find myself yeah. actually doing not still a lot but a fair amount, a fair amount a fair of it. Amount. And coming back it's still 14 hours a day and wow. to be honest with you, I mean it's a great business, it's the most amazing thing you can do but the long hours will never ever change. I don't know if you've read uh, this book, Kitchen Confidential of Anthony Bodwa. And one of my favorite passages in that book is, he says, ask me all the things I hate about my work. And I'll tell you the long hours, the pressure, the heat, the abuses in the kitchen, the antisocial life, no weekends, no Christmas, no New Year. Give me a few drinks and ask me what are the things I love about my job. <laughs> the long hours, the heat, <laughs> the pressure. Wonderful. So this is Wonderful. it. It's yeah. really the most addictive thing you can do. And I always say, if you worked in a kitchen, forget about a nine to five job. You'll never, you have been corrupted for life. Really? Yes, but in a good way. In a good way, okay. Uh, you know, you mentioned, uh, you, th this is a time when India's got the spending power, young India especially, they've, they've traveled, they're open to new cuisines. Delhi is no longer about butter chicken no. and, and kali dal. It's no. a lot more. I mean, you name it and there's something Absolutely. for your palate. Absolutely. In the midst of all this, how do you see the food business growing? Is there room for everyone? Can there ever be room for everyone? You know, when World War II happened, there were only two businesses that survived. Mm. 
the beer business and the restaurant business. <laughs> okay, so the reality is, right. however good times are, whether the economy is booming, not booming. When you're depressed, what do you need to cheer you up? A nice meal out. When you're celebrating, what do you do? You go and have a nice meal out. So I am very positive and optimistic from that point of view. And what's happened in the recent time is that finally the young India has realized there's more to restaurants and five-star right, hotels. Exactly. You know, the, uh, in the early times, mm. it was either home right. or a five-star hotel because yeah. people didn't trust restaurants outside the hotel. Today, the cha- it's totally, it's totally changed. changed right. It's all about standalone restaurants. It's no longer about, when you say Italian, there's not only one diva. Mm. And there's not diva competing with hotels. There are so many other Italian, and it's not only with Italian. Today you get Japanese as good as you would eat in Tokyo. You get dim sums as you would eat in Hong Kong. Today every cuisine, because India's traveled. Right. India suddenly has mm. discovered yeah. what's there, and they want to recreate the same experience mm. of what focaccia they ate in right. Sicily, exactly. what dim sum they ate in Hong Kong, or what tortilla they ate in Mexico. And this is what's so amazing, and that's what keeps the restaurants on toes. And is that what got you to writing your books as well, your oh cookbooks no, as well, no, no. that I want to Okay, I'll tell you a secret. Them. I wanted to write erotica when I was young. Oh, All right? damn, but the rules so, are oh. So, I mean... Mills and, and Boone? No, more no Mills and Boone I tried when I was in the sixth grade. Okay. okay. Had a Talking fight. About starting young. Oh, yes. I mean, well, that's <laughs> I, I told you I'm a young genius. No one believes me. No, but seriously... Um, as I said, finally I realized I don't have the talent to write erotica. Right. So might as well do the second best thing, <laughs> exactly. write a cookbook. Right. But it just happened. I mean, uh, I was always I'm sort of a stickler for making notes, etc. So since very early days, whatever I did, I always had long notes and experience. And, you know, so in some ways, Italian Kana was already there right. even so before it was published. Because Italian food way. for me is always related to a memory. Mm-hmm. And when my amazing editor came to me, Chiki Sarkar, who had just started Random House that time, and said, why don't you do Italian food for an Indian home? Because all the Italian cookbooks that you find, which are written by international chefs, 90% of the ingredients are not available to us. So the book was done basically keeping in mind what are the ingredients that are available without bastardizing the food. Right. Because that is that is key. I, w- that I would is imagine. A, I'm, a, yeah. I'm a purist. Always yeah. been a purist. Yeah. So for me, to uh, substitute paneer for ricotta exactly. is not an option. Exactly. But the funny part is, I mean, I also learned many things when I wrote Italian Khana because my first draft is ready, and I'm so happy. And I said, okay, we are all ready to go. Mm-hmm. And then Chiki looked at the book and said, there's something not quite right about it. I said, what do you mean? This is, she says, you have so many recipes which uses oven. So I said, so. She says, well, most of the young Indians have a microwave. They don't believe in our... I said, I don't believe it. I gave the manuscript to a few of my friends. And lo and behold, all of them came back and said, oven, but I don't have an oven. So went back to it, made it a lot simpler. Between cooking and baking. That for baking, if you get something wrong, your cake won't rise, something will sink. That is true. But with cooking, it's still unnes kiss. Absolutely. Unnes kiss. Unnes kiss. That's why Italians don't do great desserts. Thank God. I know that Simon has a whole list of questions. I do have a bunch of questions. You do see chefs more often than not give a few tips about, you know, putting out a great dish. But you, you're someone who's always said that, you know, there are no tips and there's no theory to cooking. There and isn't. why why do you believe that? Because as I just told you, you know, when you actually go and try out a recipe, food, I mean, let's face it, most of us are not cooking for pure necessity reason. Our mothers and our grandmothers did that. Mm-hmm. Now, cooking is a lot about interaction. Yeah. You're cooking with your friends around or you're cooking for the pure pleasure of it. Yeah. And... The pleasure comes from where? (laughs) Where it comes when you're doing something and you want to add your own two penny bits to it. So I don't believe that there can be one hardcore recipe or there is one super, I don't have any secrets. Mm. This is a reality. Mm. So I also don't believe. Having fun and enjoying what you do. And then having a great time. And as I said, when you're actually cooking, 
let's face it, they are really some very nerdy sorts who actually follow a recipe to correct the book who do the thermometer yeah. exactly. I mean, you know who do it. Yes, yeah. they do yes. do it. But there are very few of them. Yeah, yeah. But it's not about a scientific. Yeah. Uh, how shall I say, chemical formula right. or chemistry. Right. As it's cooking, I've always, it's, it's a nuance. It's something either you have it or you don't or have you it. you don't have it, right. And if you don't have it, you can follow the recipe to the hilt and it's yeah. still going to be a disaster. You do see a lot of, uh, you know, youngsters talking about health, talking about nutritious food, yes. uh, you know, focus on that. What, what defines healthy food for you? What do you think is you healthy know, for Ritu Dalmia? I'm a diabetic, but I still eat a dessert every day. Every okay. day. Okay. <laughs> but saying that, I have to admit, I have had a change in the way I look at food in the last few years. Mm -hmm. You know, earlier I was a serious believer of what Julia Child used to say that, you know, correct, correct. fish has to swim yeah, in butter, wine and mm -hmm. water. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think all of us today, the life that we lead, mm -hmm. where food timings are never adhered to, uh, where everyone is grabbing a bite yeah. from where we have to because I, as I said I have way too many ailments myself so in last few years for example at home now if I have to eat I have moved to oat bran mm. or ragi mm. I use a lot more quinoa in my mm. cooking than I've ever done before in all the restaurants mm. I've started using a lot of pearl barley mm. uh, I've always believed in organic vegetables although it's still very difficult to source it but all our salad leaves as far as possible I'm sourcing them from organic farm. Mm. Uh, slow food movement, we are really trying very hard to push it because at the end, you know, we are what we eat, yeah. you know. Yeah. So uh, thankfully, you know, that... We're waking up. To we are waking, waking up, up, up. Long right. way to go. Right. And healthy food can be delicious. Yeah. You know, also it's a mindset that it's not delicious, but will I open up just a pure healthy restaurant? No, no I will not, no. because it'll never work. Correct. Because and there's got to be something for everyone, right? I, mean, I, I, may, I may be in a mood to eat Absolutely. really, so be careful. So if you see huh. in Cafe Diva, yeah, you will find a lot of healthy options, mm. which are just not salad. Mm. In Latitude, mm. again, the menu actually there, the focus mainly is health food, right. Right. you know, but doing it in a very nice way. Mm. So. Uh, Soon, if yeah. I follow my thing, <laughs> I'm going to look like her. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. What would you call a chef's hard day, like a difficult day? With the challenges, some, some of the days when you plans. feel that, you know, it's just... Uh, yeah, I was okay. going to add, I, I'll, just, I'll just add to that, you can answer it in one go. What is the most frustrating part of being in the business? Are yeah. they sort of, is it the same answer? Is it, is it still... It's a client. Okay. Sometimes when, okay, sourcing, like I said, is difficult. Mm -hmm when you teach your chef something and they make the same. So there are many. Correct. But I'll tell you, when you present a dish which you've put your heart and soul into it, and they send back the puzzle, kacha hai aur paka ke lao, isme thoda olive bhi dal do, chicken bhi dal do, sun-dry tomato bhi dal do, grilled vegetable bhi dal do, mushroom bhi dal dena. Okay, okay, that's sometimes quite heartbreaking. Yeah. yeah. But I've also, like I said, aged and mellowed. How do you deal in with the it? Early how do you deal with it then? Okay. And how, how do you deal with it now? Yeah. In the early days, I would come, put my hands like that, and you say, would walk up to the yeah, table. Yeah, okay. and uh, so you're not gonna eat like this anymore. I'm gonna and okay. all with a smile. With a smile. With a smile. Come on, okay. always I mean, a cute not, smile. Yeah, I'm okay. Not, I'm not. Okay. I'm not those you don't have, uh, okay. chefs that you have on various TV shows with yeah, four pans and yeah, so Yeah, exactly. I'm a very sweet, gentle okay. chef not a from that. Yeah, no God yes. Ramsey is here. <laughs> Thank God. Oh God. That's a terrible. But word. now. I still won't mess with my food. Mm -hmm. I will still present it the way I feel it's right. right. But I've become a lot more tolerant. Mm. Okay, I don't get mortally offended that they didn't want to eat it the way it was in the menu. Mm -hmm. You know. But and would you alter it to there? I mean, if the un no, ignorant would sort of say kacha hai when it's fine. Yeah, when it's yeah, then I'm then going to I will overcook it for them. You will. Okay. I will. Because that's they the have to, you the get end, what you want, basically. Yeah, at yeah, the end, okay. they are here right. to enjoy an evening. Yeah. At Fair the enough. end, they are yeah. here to enjoy a meal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in some ways, you're getting paid for it, so yeah. you have to be responsible Absolutely. for it. Absolutely. So there are few things, but there are few things which we still draw a line to. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Like mint chutney. I have had clients here who have asked for mint chutney. Okay? With their pastas. I've had people who have asked for sliced onions. 
okay, uh, with some chili flakes and salt on top. So we've had many interesting. Okay. One day I'm going to write a bestseller. I on think that, that would be quite something. I, I mean, move aside erotica. <laughs> this is here I come. Why are we? No, but there's saying more. that I'm hmm. very lucky. At least in GK2 Diva, hmm. because 95% of our guests here hmm. are regulars who have been coming here since we've opened up. Hmm. So in some ways it's very nice hmm. because they know exactly what they want. Right. They get what they want. I know what they like to eat, right. and they also keep us on our toes. Right. But exactly. Yeah, a difficult client always yeah. gives you sleepless But nights. clearly you've learned to grin and bear it and sort, yes. of, sort of go with the flow, really, <laughs> as it were. Well, we're slipping into a quick break now. There's lots more uh, coming up, with, with two, including, we hope, that some tips, something beyond what would life have been if she were actually selling marble. Uh, let's no, just try and find out. No, she says. No. So maybe something that we don't know. <laughs> the unexpected coming up yes. right after this. <laughs>